What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Vegan Cooking with Samantha. Today, we are going to make another holiday recipe, but this time, it's for Valentine's Day. Okay, it's not really a Valentine's Day recipe, however, I have these cute little heart silicone cake pans. Aren't they adorable? They're little bitties. And so we are going to make heart shaped cake, chocolate cake, chocolate vegan cake. And um, these ones are going to be big enough for two people. Two peoples. Okay, so what we have today, we need some flour, sugar, cocoa powder, uh, baking soda. Where's my baking soda? Oh. Baking soda. Um, it says canola oil, but I was reading the, the whole blurb about it all, and it said you could use some like um, other neutral tasting oil or whatever. So I'm going to try this, fingers crossed, with actually macadamia nut oil because um, it really doesn't have a flavor. I, I mean, I don't taste it. Even if it does, like would it really hurt to have a chocolate cake that has hints of macadamia nut? Um, I think not. Okay, so vanilla extract, um, apple cider vinegar. Oh, I almost threw that over hot coffee and then this one actually has a buttercream um frosting so we need some butter oh i need to get that out of the fridge um some powdered sugar got that half a teaspoon of vanilla and a splash of coffee so first things first preheat the oven to 350 My usual housekeeping. I don't own the rights to any music you hear. I've just got some lo-fi going on right now, so. Whatever. Um, let's get this butter shopping. Oh, oh, I have a lot of butter. Okay, this one needs ooh, a full stick of butter. That's a lot of butter. Okay. So, a trick I learned to soften butter is to pour hot water in a glass. And so, to heat up the glass. And then you stick it over the stick of butter and it will warm it. So, let me do that right quick. Alrighty. Butter is softening. I preheated the oven. And I went ahead and did the next step, which is to... This calls for a little six inch pan. Like I said, I don't have that, or I'm not using that. But what I didn't realize, <laughs> you spray the pans, then you line the bottom with parchment paper and then you spray it again, which is fine. Except, do you know how hard it is to draw the outline of your pan when it's silicone and it moves when you're trying to draw it? Anyway. I did my best. We'll see how they turn out. All right. Okay. In a large bowl, whisk together our. Oh man, I got really good. Oh, I got it wet. Ugh. I need more than one set of measuring cups. That's what I need. Hey, babe. It's windy, guys. My, uh, actually, I don't think you need to do that. It's not too bright right now. It's fine. Usually we cover the window behind me, so it's not like a lot of backlighting. Um, he had it covered. I don't know how. It's windy. We are having a winter storm. Okay, back to this. 
we need in a large bowl our flour, which is three quarter cup. Quarter cup. Three of these. Not bad. Three quarter cup of our flour. And we are using all purpose flour, not pastry flour, not cake flour. It asked for all purpose flour. One. Gets quarter cup. This also gets quarter cup. I guess it doesn't matter. Hmm. I have about fifteen minutes to decide. Five minutes to decide. All right, sugar, 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 sugar. We need a half a cup of sugar. difference between Dutch processed versus just regular cocoa powder. So Dutch processed cocoa is an alkali solution to lessen its acidity. I'm okay with that. This process makes it smoother, darker, and often richer than natural cocoa. And all of these qualities shine through in baked goods that use cocoa. So the question is, do I want smoother frosting or smoother actual cake? Richer. I think we'll do the richer, the darker, richer uh, cake. We're gonna do this in the cake. Cake, cake. All right. If I can open it. to do it for the cake and the frosting because this asks for a quarter cup. That is so good to know. I did not know that, friends. Dutch process all the way. Okay, that's too much. Cut that down. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna spill it. I'm gonna spill it. Ew. That's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. Uh, I need a little bowl and a little bowl and a bowl. Okay. So. Okay. 
I think we're gonna have enough to do this in the frosting too. So this is gonna be a super rich cake. <laughs> yes, chocolate. I think we might have enough. Yay. Happy surprises. Okay. Um, I need to move this. These are my little spray pans. And, okay, so we got the cocoa, and we need a baking soda, and salt. Baking soda. Baking soda, we need one teaspoon. Let me find my teaspoon. Okay, so, wait, wait. One teaspoon baking soda, pure baking soda. <laughs> I definitely have to remember to check that because accidents happen. And then we're going to do half a teaspoon of salt. Salt, salt. Little known fact, iodized salt. So, iodine is a micronutrient that the human body needs. And most people do not get enough especially those who cut out regular table salt that is iodized. This is where most of actually the American population, most of the American population gets their iodine from iodized table salt. So y'all that are cutting it out, you need to make sure you're getting some iodine somewhere else because it is a micronutrient that is important for your body. I'm not saying put it on everything because you don't need that much. So I try to do at least one, you only need a little bit, a little bit. I try to do at least one meal a day with iodized salt versus like Himalayan salt or Celtic sea salt, whatever. Okay, uh, okay. that's my note on iodized salt. Back to this. In the large bowl, whisk them together. Uh, I got the flour, sugar, cocoa powder, and iodized salt. You know, this does make me realize, I don't know, I could just be crazy. I mean, I am crazy. But, when I'm working with Dutch process cocoa powder, smells different and when you mix it it just makes it smoother I might use it more often I need to find other than Ghirardelli that's process because with how much I use I'm not about to be buying that much Ghirardelli plus that one is 15 calories and regular process is 10 calories. Oh, what's the serving size? One tablespoon? Serving size, yeah, same. How does that make sense? Oh, freaking, how does that make sense? Somebody does not know how to calculate calories. Oh, that one has fifth. Okay, never mind. There's a tiny bit more fat in that, less carbs, more carbs, less carbs. Yes. Dutch processed, at least the Ghirardelli has one gram of fat per serving, two grams of carbohydrates and one gram of protein. Regular processed cocoa, 0.5 gram of fat, three carbohydrates and less than one gram of protein. Macros are different in it. Anyways, super side note. Okay, now in a large measuring cup, which I don't have, so we're gonna use a large uh, bowl. A bowl, we're gonna use a bowl. Bowl. We need, let me get the stuff I need. Uh, the oil, vanilla, vinegar, and coffee. Oil, vanilla, vinegar, coffee. All right, let me get my coffee hot. Okay, hot coffee. I put my oil in here. Again, I use macadamia nut oil, cold pressed virgin macadamia no, no oil. 
macadamia nut oil, cold pressed. Um, this is a good source of omega-9, by the way. Oh, whatever. So, uh, oil, then we need our vanilla, which is half a teaspoon. Oh, my bottle is leaking. That's great. Half a teaspoon. Oh, man, this thing is like totally soaking wet now. Oops. Note to self, don't shake a vanilla bottle. Our vinegar, I think. Oh, good. It's sorry, it's just a pencil. It's not, not any of my things I'm using. The vinegar is half a teaspoon of vinegar. If you heard the quacking, that means it's time to feed our babies. Organic apple cider vinegar with mother. You can actually get this at Walmart, by the way. Not bad. At least in Tennessee, you can. Uh, vinegar and coffee. So for the cake coffee, we need half a cup. This is probably going to spill. Yep. We're spilling. It says to whisk together. Then in the large, uh, slowly pour the coffee mixture into the bowl while whisking. We are whisking the cake. We are not mixing with a bleep. We're whisking. Whisk until the cake batter. Um, my instructions are cut off, but I did look at the instructions on the computer and it says whisk until it's mixed and all the clumps are gone but don't over mix it because it'll become tough and then you'll have a tough dense cake not what we want i really hate these ones that say slowly mix it in because i just want to dump it in hard time there a little bit I need three hands. Ooh. my foot. <laughs> Scraping down the sides. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Somebody just texted me and my leg vibrated. Weird. Scrape the batter into the prepared can cans, cake pans. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I, I'm gonna do that off camera because it's gonna take me a second to split it evenly between the two since I'm doing it in two little heart hands. Okay, so we've got our batter measured into two little heart pans. Not gonna tilt it because I don't wanna mess up the leveling. Shake up a little. All right. So, side note. I have not actually baked a cake in 
like 10 years, I think. I don't think I've baked a cake since forever ago. However, my sister is an amazing cake baker, decorator, all sorts of stuff. She does weddings, birthdays, fancy things, and uh, anniversaries. And I asked her for help on this because, like I said, this recipe is calling for a single six inch pan. And I don't have that. I'm making it with this, these two little heart pans. Anyways, so I asked her about timing and what to do. Uh, probably gonna have to eyeball it, but what were her thoughts? And so she said that I should half the time and then watch it, you know, that at least could get half the time. Um, if you're curious right now what I'm doing, I absolutely have no idea if this is useful. I'm just poking the little air bubbles. Anyways, she didn't say to do that. It's just, I don't know, intuition, whatever. Anyways, so my lovely sister Sarah is helping me virtually bake these little cakies. And if you want to check out an awesome cake artiste, she made our wedding cake and it was phenomenal, by the way. Go to Instagram and check out Two Tier Cakes. All in word. Two Tier Cakes on Instagram. That is my sister Sarah. And sometimes she posts her awesome cake creations on there. So check her out and follow her. I'm going to pop these in the oven. And it's supposed to be 32 to 34 minutes. But I'm going to put it in for about 16 and check them. Um, oh, what she said to do when I check them is to poke it. Not like jam my finger in it, obviously. Just like touch the top. And if it springs back up, then it's done. So, if not, add some more time. I don't remember how much time she said, but I'll look before then. So, sticking it in the oven. Okay, we're back. So, we are going to make some frosting while these cakes are cooking. So we need to do a uh, one and a half cup of. Oh guys, it's snowing. We got some big freaking fluffy snowflakes falling. It's not really, I mean, it's cold outside, obviously, but it doesn't really seem cold enough for it to stick. But it's nice to see the fluffy snowflakes. Uh, so we need one and a, Alexa, volume down. One and a half cups of powdered sugar. Two. So, three. Ooh, 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 ooh. sugar. Quarter cup cocoa powder. And we're still going to try to use our Dutch process. Where's my quarter cup? No. Dutch processed. Fingers crossed we have enough, guys. Oh, that would be a yes. And then some. Whoops. So this entire cake and frosting is going to make, be made with Dutch process. Mm -hmm. so we are going to have a very rich, smooth chocolate cake and frosting for Valentine's Day. All right, so uh, cocoa powder. Oh, no, wrong page, wrong page. Um. Vanilla, I need vanilla. More vanilla. How much vanilla? We need a half teaspoon again of 
No. It's over here, because I washed it. Because I spilled it. Half a half a half Spoony very vanilla -y. And then a pinch. Oh, come on, guys. I hate when things say pinch of salt. Why? Because your pinch may be bigger than mine. So I don't know how much to do. It says also a pinch of salt. And I love it. The, the, okay, the ingredient list for this does not quite match the instructions. Doesn't say salt goes in the frosting at all, but the instructions do. It doesn't say how much. It says a splash of hot coffee to bring it together. Is this even hot still? No. Mm, I need to... Whatever this up. So... Then the instructions say tablespoon. So, oh, I didn't even say who this recipe is from. Well, now that I'm talking smack, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> Need to update your instructions. All right, I'm gonna heat up my coffee and this we are actually blending together. So, I'm gonna heat up the coffee and we will get it mixed. Okay, so, steaming, piping hot cup of coffee. We need to stick our softened butter in here. Oh, it's definitely soft. Ah, oh, goodness, I love that trick. Whoever it was on freaking Instagram that shared that trick with me, you rock. All right, get this bed ready. Ooh, my shoulders hurt. Guys, this week's shoulder day. Mm. I'm hurting. Hurting. Okay. So, before I start, we're gonna plop. This says a tablespoon at least. If you need more to make it to come together, you'll do that. So, here we go. Come on, butter. Oh, butter. Oh, butter. I'm gonna guess we're gonna need more. Because this is supposed to make frosting, right? there be water in this or something? There we go. Watch, I put too much in. Okay. Um, butter, powdered sugar, cocoa powder, vanilla, pinch of salt, coffee. Add the remaining coffee if needed to bring it together. Well, I did. coffee in there, but that's okay, because the cakes are still baking, and we're going to give this time to, I don't know, maybe thicken up. Hold on, I got to scrape these sides in, because we got powdered sugar all over the loving place. So our first timer did go off for the cakes and I did the poke test and they were not ready. So Sarah said to add five to nine minutes and check again. So I added five. 
So we'll probably have another timer go off in just a little bit. Yeah, our frosting is way too runny. So I'm going to actually taste it. Oh, holy crap, that tastes good. <laughs> mm, mm. Oh, yeah. I'm going to transfer this into our smaller container because I have other things to cook. And I'm going to actually stick it in the fridge because it has butter in it. So if I stick it in the fridge, then it will solidify a little more logically. All right. I'm going to do that. And we'll be back. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. So our cakes, they were clearly not ready the first time because I poked them. I, I just on the middle and they didn't bounce back up. But I had to do that a couple times. So now I did a toothpick test and they came out clean. So I'm going to set these babies on a cooling rack and let them cool down. Aren't they so cute? Look at how cute. How hot and cute. They're adorable. All right. Let me see if they cave in. <laughs> um. But I'm gonna let these babes cool and we'll be back with our cake recipe. This will be a tall cake. We'll be back. Welcome back to our Valentine's Day cake episode. So, we ended up with two perfect little chocolate cakes. One chocolate cake, two chocolate cakes. I was thinking, then we were gonna take the two and stack them on each other, but that's not gonna happen. We're gonna cut these in half and one is each serving, which you should probably do half the cake is a serving. So, we're gonna find the cutting board. Okay, and, all right, cut them in half, half up. Too much. 
right, so we're gonna spread this frosting as a mid layer, right? Okay, spread it out. And then here's my genius idea. Oh yeah, we're doing this. So, we have frozen raspberry. We're gonna put some raspberries around this on each of them. And let's make them down a little bit so that it's not too thick, right? Then you place the top layer on there. Smash it down a little bit. Right? Okay. Hey. We are frosting these babies. We're, we're frosting the cake now. I'm not gonna promise this is gonna turn out gloriously coated. Oh yeah, that's working. Mm -hmm. I am not an official cake decorator. That's not my jam, but I'm pretty sure these are going to be amazing. I have no doubts. Okay. Well, that one's coated. Ah. All right. I think I'll get better at this one. Looks all right. All right, we got a heart cake. I am gonna add a little bit extra in a second. Just give me a minute. Okay, so for our little glorious heart cake additions, we got some raspberries. I mean, because why not? Then we have some little mini chocolate chips. A bit. Oh yeah, little mini chocolate chips. We have to eat our dinner before we taste these little cakes, but I'll be back, we'll be back friends. Okay friends, the cakes are cooked and they're decorated and we have our little Heart cakes, heart chocolate cake, single serve. And we're gonna test them out. So, take a swig of a freaking chocolate cake, but double layer chocolate cake. All right, I took a hunk out of it. Chocolate cake. Mmm. Ah, ready? Mm-hmm. Mmm. 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 Moist. 
spongy, moist, velvet, rich, mm, frothy a little bit. This really is good because the spongy part is not dry. Right. This is one of my pet peeves. Yeah, he hates cake. He hates cake. Because usually cake is like dry and... Ugh. So, do you like the cake? Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, so, in this particular single serve, I added uh, some sprinkles of chocolate chips. Drop some raspberries in there. Raspberries are inside. We just haven't found them yet. Well, he did. Um, and some lemon zest on the top. And these are our single serve chocolate cake. Cheers, friends. This is really good cake. And the non-cake lover likes the cake. Yeah? Mm-hmm.